those people are the ones that don't have the knowledge, those are the five percent. And this is called a 15 percent reduction in mother to child transmission. What, what, what made us achieve this? This is because there is a debt of have been using prevention measures to prevent mother to child transmission. But no, I don't understand. Those okay, are the effective measures okay. we are using. I have an, you've answered my question. Another question. Achieve. Oh, the 1990 policy where we have began to. Ah, uh, that's a good thing. During the process that mentioned there, as if you, it's prevention there. You say, yes, it is. Ladies and gentlemen, there isn't anywhere where we shall not reach. We are looking at the most people who are affected being in bed. Because how the fight against HIV is it's not an individual, but it's a, uh, it's a fight that we need to fight as the public. What will come with the result? Prove it to the 5% of the weight. Okay, man, please, in that, if it well, has been ineffective, it's going to be. Let effective. me talk one by one, please. Is it by treating them or by giving them the knowledge? Who said the prevention measures, ladies and gentlemen? What has been happening? Ladies and gentlemen, in this case, we are coming up to constantly make strengthen the things. What are we going to be doing? We are going to be carrying out effective communication. And in this case, effective communication, we shall be assessing. What has been happening, ladies and gentlemen? People have not been understanding this institution. The language used, the approach, the time, the place. What have you come with, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, that, that means that you're not supporting treatment. How many? Greater times? priority does not mean negative. Did you say? No, ladies and gentlemen. Telling them that the HIV is so bad is a killer disease. Why? Because if the five percent of them don't have treatment been in place. Treatment? Yeah. But then you question. Has it infected every day? It still emphasizes my question. Are we going to go away with 150 people being infected per day by using treatment or prioritizing prevention measures to tell them what to do? Ladies and gentlemen, if I am taking you to simple mathematics, if we're losing people going, uh, being affected, listen then, it has been having a hand. We're looking at the methods being used in the language of prevention or treatment. A risk in case. Thank you. Thank you very much. And our delegate would like to kindly answer these questions. Has prevention been in existence or not? Well, we are advocating or prioritizing effective prevention measures. We talked about communication, yes, we whereby we have 55% of the people not having them, so we need to make them aware. Plus, people in the villages who cannot access the measures that we have been using. We have looked at the language. Since they Where are we losing them? Does it that mean they already have it? So if you can well, solve that problem... Let me people in all the language that can, they can yes, understand. My question, I'm it's understanding. So I'm how how answering that figure that we have been having. That's why I've been comparing the generations. Are you? Please answer my question. Centers, we shall approach them. We're looking at the language being used. We shall not only use English, but each and every language that's... Listen then. It has been having a hand. We're looking at the methods being used in the language. The time, the place. We have only been looking at people who can access, but not looking at the last people in the villages who cannot access the measures sure? that we have been Are using. Sure? We have looked at the language, sensitizing people in all the languages that can, they can Are understand. You my question, I'm you understanding. Uh, 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 I'm answering it. Please. Have you showed us how you're going to change the language, time and place? Yes. Have you showed us how you're going to change the language, time and place, in that if it's well, been ineffective, it's going to be. Let me talk one by one, please. Ladies and gentlemen, there isn't anywhere where we shall not reach. We are looking at the most people who are affected being in birthing centers, we shall approach them. We are looking at the language being used, we shall not only use English, but each and every language that someone can understand. Those okay. are the effective measures okay. we are using. I have an you've answered my question. Another question. Do you support treatment or you do not support treatment? Well, I'm not prioritizing I don't prevention. Need, I want you to then answer yes or no. Yes. Listen to my answer. We are yet prioritizing prevention because of the current problem of the new infections. Who is putting us in the grave we shall not overcome? Do you support treatment or you do not? Thank you very much. According to the current problem, we need prioritize prevention. Okay, that, that means that you're not supporting treatment. How many Greater numbers? priority does not mean negative. Did you say that there are very many numbers of infections? I said it, of course. You said it. Who brought the new infections? The new Who infections. Is the new infections? Well, Who ladies and gentlemen, if I go back to the four phases, who is infecting those people? Who is infecting those people? Yes, who is infecting We are looking at this people okay, getting infected because 50% of them don't have the knowledge, so they are getting infected. Uh, but they are crossing those people because they have knowledge. Is it that they got it from nowhere or it is the HIV positive that they are Because they don't have the disease without their awareness, so they ignore it and that's what they are trying to fight at. And I would like to ask you, if we are losing so many people, mm. does that mean that they are already infected? Why are you focusing on them? I beg your pardon? You said we are losing many people. Losing, I say, elaborate more. You said we are losing many people. Why are we losing them? Does that mean they already have it? So if you well, can solve that problem, let me take you back. Explain. I gave you the numbers, 151 people getting infected yes, per day. And those are the numbers I talked about. Those people are because they don't have the knowledge, those are the very percent. And this is cool, that's what is leading to the problem. Thank you.
work to solve us, to give us solutions for them, to give us solutions that are not infected or they're infected. Thank you, Alexia Churches and the other cells. I'll begin the resolution to death cases. These cells are supposed to prevent and rather than treatment in the fight against HIV AIDS. First of all, we want to be served with their, with their definition of treatment. They gave their definition as curing. We as the negators, we are giving our definition as making someone feel better. Now we are talking about the HIV patients. Then, they came here and said that the patients that 151 infections are being, many people are being affected with HIV. Which people are spreading the HIV virus? There are the people who are infected. So why don't you focus on the people who are already infected? They came and asked him, does this support treatment? He clearly said that, yes, he believes in treatment. Then why don't you go ahead and follow treatment? We as delegators are saying, rather than is preferring, so we are preferring treatment more than prevention, because prevention is under treatment. The analysis has been made that both treatment and prevention are both good, but we are looking for something that is better. And what is something better? That is the treatment part of it, and that's why we are focusing on the treatment. And why are we focusing on the treatment? We do not, we want to eliminate the new HIV infections. And how are we doing it? According to the United data, the adherence to ARV has reduced the number of the HIV by 93%. So by taking in the ARVs, we as the legislators, we are saying that we are using the ART therapy. What is the ART therapy? That is the antiviral therapy. It consists of sensitization, aids and counseling, and also giving of ARVs. So the farmers came here and told us that they are going to sustain it. Don't you think prevention is falling under treatment? They are already collaborating with us. That's why we are saying prevention is under treatment and we are going for it. Let us use treatment because the people that we need to concentrate more and most, they are the sick. The 1.4 million that we have already existing in Uganda can be treated because they are the very people who are going to spread the virus. So if we treat them, that means the virus won't be exposed. And according to the use of ARFs, the ARFs help to reduce on the viral load. And as they reduce the viral load at a higher extent, at some point they will not spread the disease. So that's why we are that's why they will not spread the virus. That's why we as the negators are saying should they do go for treatment but not ignore prevention because it falls under treatment. That's what we are trying to tell the farmers. We are not neglecting it, we are going with it, but we are preferring treatment more than prevention. Now to go ahead, to go ahead, prevention has some loopholes in it. If it does not have loopholes, why are they why are they Following it, we are saying we are going for treatment because prevention has some loopholes. Which loopholes am I talking about? There are already people who are getting the virus. They are preventing it. But why are we having more cases of people increasing? Because they are not proving to us that they are going to prevent it. So that's why we are coming in and saying, why don't we go ahead and treat the virus so that they do not spread it some more? Then he came here and talked about a presidential first track initiative. You have to know that it has the 1990-90. And the 1990-90 that I'm talking about, the first 90 is about testing. And uh, under the ART therapy, we have negatives and counseling. After those people have tested, the testing of the people who will be negative, they will be counseled and told how to live a, he a healthy life so to acquire the virus. Then the people who have already tested and have the HIV positive, that's when we go to the second 90. The other 90, it is to provide the ARF. And what of the last 90? The last 90, it is to make sure they continue taking the ARF effectively. And if used effectively, it will help to reduce on the viral load. And as they continue using the ARF, it will reduce on the viral load and they will help to reduce on the spreading of the, of the virus. Now, continuing on that, there will be stigmatization if we go on their treatment. If to go on their prevention, how is it going to be? They are ignoring the people who are born with HIV AIDS. How are they going to prevent them from acquiring it? You came and told us about prevention to manage it. What over 5% of the babies who do not acquire it? 
tell people their faith by sin are left out. So what are we going to do for them? That's when we call for treatment. And that's when we are saying, why don't you go for that treatment? But that's when we are insisting that you also have prevention and that treatment. But we are preferring treatment rather than prevention. Now, to continue with that, the first speaker also came and told us they, during the first examination, they asked me, is prevention there? He said, yes, it is there. Then, if it is there, prove to us how effective will the prevention you're bringing in existence be of use. If you have not told us, you have told us about the language. How are we sure that the communication will be there and effective? In our ART Europe, we already have a sustaining and a counseling. The people we are using are well equipped with the methods they are going to use. That's why we are going ahead and saying, let us use treatment. We do not have to go for pre we have to go for prevention, but preferring treatment more. So that's why we are saying that let's consider treatment more than prevention. Because prevention already exists, but it's proving it is not working at a higher rate. So let's use treatment higher than prevention so that we can reduce the spreading of our virus. My first question is, do you agree that there is a high rate of infections in Uganda for it that is in, in relation to HIV? A high rate of infections? The infections... Do you agree that it is high? The infections are there. Let's say we are having... Okay, okay, that's enough, that's enough. Are we going to reduce these new infections by treatment or by prevention? That's why I say prevention is under treatment. So we have to prevent. We have, do you agree that actually we have to prevent new that's infections? That's why I say we prefer to We agree that we have to prevent new infections. Enough, that's enough. Do ARPs eliminate the HIV virus? They help to reduce on the virus. They eliminate the virus. Okay, 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 okay. The enough. virus cannot be spread. So when somebody takes ARVs, does he still have the risk of transmitting the virus even when he's on ARVs? Reduce consistently, the virus is reduced. But the risk of transmission exists. But the risk, but the risk of transmission still exists. When taken consistently, the well, virus yeah, the risk of transmission exists. So when the mother takes ARVs. Isn't she preventing the baby from acquiring HIV? That's why I say prevention is under treatment. So what is the end result? Preventing the baby from getting HIV, right? That's why treatment. Preventing, get it right. Preventing the baby. Are you treating the baby or you are preventing the baby from getting HIV? That's why I say prevention is under Okay, we proceed. You say, uh, how has treatment been in place? Treatment. Yeah. Has treatment been in place? Treatment has been there with treatment. Enough. That's enough. Do you seek to maintain the current status quo? Pardon? Do you seek to maintain the current status quo? Yes, we are maintaining it because... And do you agree? Do you agree that in the current status quo we register very high infections? I'm talking about that prevention... You agree? Do you agree that in the current status quo we register very... I'm going ahead of me. Okay. The other question is, who gets HIV? The person who gets it is the person who never had it. <laughs> so, is there a need to prevent this person from getting the virus? We need to treat the people Is there a need to prevent this person? So, is there a need to prevent this person from getting the virus? Okay, what does... The other question is, what is the percentage of the population which is healthy? What is the percentage of the population which is healthy? My next speaker will talk about that. Okay, what does priority mean? Priority. Pardon? What does priority mean? Priority means you are basically focusing on one and you are talking about you. Yeah, you are focusing on one in consider and you also look at the others, right? Priority is different from priority. Does priority mean neglect? Yes, it does. You need break time. Result. This house believes that prevention. Sorry, this house supports prevention rather than treatment of HIV/AIDS. Our new changes are set to the major rebuttal. 
the, the negative seek to maintain the current status quo. Let me take you back to the current status quo. 151 people get sick every day of their judges. 77 new of our dear judges get sick of AIDS every day of their judges. 45% of the population of the only one that is aware about comprehensive knowledge concerning HIV, meaning 55% do not have this knowledge, our dear judges. In 2014, we lost 31,000 people, and we are continuing to lose, and they seek to maintain the current status quo, our dear judges. They come here giving us prevention uh, treatment as priority. When asked, does priority mean neglect? They said yes. That means on their side, they are actually neglecting prevention. Now, let us let me teach them English the same amount, our dear judges. What is priority? priority Priority is giving emphasis to one but not neglecting the other, oh dear judges. Why are we giving prevention? Priority one, ninety two point six percent of our population is healthy. It is only seven point three that is sick. Which one needs emphasis, our dear judges? Secondly, they are talking about ARVs. In a Sunday vision of December 2nd, 2017, it shows that 100 billion that was supposed to cater for ARVs was mismanaged by the government, and even HIV positive people seek to sue the government. Is this the status quo they want to maintain if they're going to prioritize treatment where are the drugs our dear judges they are continuing to tell us our dear judges that there are infections and they are saying that in this case prevention is under treatment when asked our dear judges when you are giving a mother ARVs what does she produce does she produce a healthy baby or an HIV positive baby they say it is an HIV negative person and therefore it it calls for prioritizing treatment our dear judges they also come here and tell us that ARVs are very effective in other words treatment is very effective it has been closed since 1990 our dear judges and we are still having an increasing rate of deaths are dear judges. What is the problem in the resolution? The problem is to curb the new infections. 151 people getting sick per day is too big a number that we cannot sit and neglect it. That is why we call for prevention. They ask us how it is going to cater for the, for the, for the sick, for the already infected. Now let me show you the importance of prevention. One, it is two way. We are preventing the sick from spreading the disease and preventing the healthy from acquiring it using the same prevention. They come with a stand, our dear judges, that is too negligible, that is too shaky, that we cannot go by it, our dear judges. I'm going to bring you back to our plan. Our plan is very comprehensive. They ask us how effective our plan is. One, we talked about effective communication. Why did we bring in this? Because 55% of our population doesn't have knowledge about, a a about HIV. That is why they need to be sensitized. And making it comprehensive enough, we decided that these people will be sensitized in their languages so that they can actually access this communication the best way, in the most convenient places. That means if they are in school, then they are accessing school. If they are in their communities, they are accessing their communities. Our dear judges, to cater for eliminating mother to child transmission of HIV, the government has already put in place rural mobile clinics where these women can have safe delivery and prevent their babies from acquiring the disease, showing the effectiveness of our plan, our dear judges. Coming back to safe male circumcision, the, the, the United Nations report shows that safe male circumcision actually reduces risk 65% of a male from acquiring the disease, showing that it is actually very effective. Coming back to condom use, the same source proves that 98% of the people who use, 98% uh, reduced risks when people use condoms during sexual intercourse, showing the effectiveness of our plan. Let's come to abstinence. Abstinence is 100% free, our dear judges, and therefore can prevent these people from acquiring the disease. I believe with a plan on board, we are liable to winning this debate. Thank Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you, pre did you define prevention as stopping something from happening? Yes, I did. Yes, you did. So how are you going to treat, how are you going to prevent Yet you are saying you're going to stop. So how is stopping the virus? To from answer your question, I already defined priority. That means I'm not neglecting prevention, neither am I neglecting treatment. So talking about prioritizing, you're saying you're not neglecting. Yet you're saying prevention is is trying to stop that disease. So what are you going to do to that people? Prevention who means that I'm priority. trying to stop the disease from being spread and preventing the others from acquiring that. it. So are they the sick who need the doctor or the people who are not sick? Both need them. 
Okay. <laughs> so what is the number of people who are living with HIV AIDS? 7.3% compared to 92.7% which is and healthy. And how many people are affected? Pardon? How many are how many people are affected? Considering the number of people that are affected, that is I why we come with a visible plan. How many people plan. are infected? So I expect. A I told you, 7.3 percent, meaning 1.4 million people of the population, are they compared affected to around they 34 are million people I'm who are How healthy. many people are affected Do the in mind. the population? Do the math. So you're not informed. <laughs> so, is HIV AIDS dangerous? It is very dangerous. That's why we come with a visible plan. Something so that we do not come up with. if it is dangerous, how are you going to treat it? Pardon? If HIV AIDS is dangerous, how are you planning to treat it? We are treating HIV AIDS from a two way. One, we are preventing those ones who do not have it from acquiring the disease and preventing the ones who have it from spreading it. That is the best way we can treat it. Yes, and you then are I'm saying. still answering your question if you would not mind. So the second thing is and communication treating. Pardon? Sensitization and communication treating. Nelson Mandela says information is power. The 55% need to be empowered, and the only way they can be empowered is when they have the information. Suppressing the virus. Pardon? Is communication and when I remember defining priority, when I said I was defining priority, I told you we are not neglecting treatment. I also defined prevention by saying it is going to be two way. So it means by preventing the people from spreading it, we are giving them ARVs, and by preventing the healthy from acquiring the disease, we are sensitizing them. I answered that. Affected people to be more affected, or you would rather deal with the majority or the minority? Clarify your question. It is now. <laughs> Would you prefer using the majority or basing on the minority? I told you our prevention is I two way. A yes or a no. Would you prefer going with the majority or the minority? My mind is not a computer. Allow me to explain. I'm one asking, so okay, I proceed. The proceed. I proceed. Want. So, would you want the Thank you. people or the. <laughs> Thank you very much, our dear judges of today's tournament. I am completely disheartened by the affirmers because they do not actually know what they are talking about. Our dear judges, to begin with, the affirmers came here and told us that there are people who are infected and there are people who are affected. But the thing is like this. They are looking at the people who are affected, neglecting the people who are infected. How, which people are actually spreading HIV AIDS in any case? If they are looking at the people who are affected and they are looking at the people who are not infected, which people are giving the disease to the people? Our dear judges, then our farmers actually came here and asked us that, how are we going to eliminate HIV AIDS? But we boldly told them that we have ARVs. The adherence to ARVs is actually 93%. And we clearly told them, our first negator clearly told them that the adherence to ARVs is 93%. It suppresses the viral load. And with time, actually, this person will not spread the HIV to the people who are not infected, our dear judges. But they could not notice that. To, uh, to add on, the first a farmer came here and told us that they are actually, there are very many infections, but we are asking which people are bringing in those infections and they the people who are infected. So what are we going to do to the people who are infected, our dear judges? And the second Afama came here and told us that prevention is a two-way. Yes, they are saying prevention is a two-way. Is it effective? What are they planning to do if it is a two-way? Which two ways are they giving us, our dear judges? We told them in our status quo that actually we have, there is prevention and treatment, but they have failed to see actually what we are doing, but still they are embracing our status quo. Yes, they know that it is there, but we are saying we are embracing treatment more than prevention because prevention is already there but they do not know that the infected people are actually leading to the people who are affected because you get affected because you have an infected person in your house our dear judges that is what you are trying to eliminate to add on they also tell they also told us that actually that prevention is effective but we ask them how effective is it is it the sick that need the doctor to also add on if it is effective we are asking them that if it is effective, how is it effective? I want them to understand us. How is it effective? So if they are saying
saying that prevention is effective. How are they going to, what are they going to do to the people who already have the HIV AIDS? Is it going to, the, the, actually the effectiveness of this prevention, is it mainly going to the people who are infected or to the people who are non-infected? They are telling us that there are actually 52,000 52, new infections. But we ask them, where do these, these 52,000 infections come from? But our dear judges, to also add on, they told us, the farmers came here and told us that we are losing very many lives. And indeed, we are losing the very many lives, just like they told us. So, for us, we are saying, we are offering treatment to the people who are going to lose these lives. So, as to actually prolong their lives, because we have the adherence to ARVs, but keeping in mind that we are prioritizing, we are not neglecting prevention, which is already there. But they are trying to show us that actually, treatment is not going to do anything, our dear judges. To also add on what my negator say, we are saying that we are trying to give the attention to the people who are already infected, our dear judges. They also told them that Prevention is under treatment, but they cannot understand this. We have ART. ART involves guidance, counseling, and testing, but they could not understand this, our dear judges. They do not know that when you go for testing, they give you counseling. And when you are HIV infected, when you are, I mean, when you are HIV positive, you go on ARVs. And when you are not, you are, they actually give you both ARVs and counseling. And when you are not, they counsel you on how to prevent, how to actually, how to stop yourself from getting the virus, our dear judges. But they did not understand that, our dear judges. They are saying that, to add on, the farmers are actually saying that, that the infected people, they are saying that the affected people are very many. And they are actually telling us the prevalence rate of AIDS in Uganda is 7.3. But they do not know where this prevalence rate is coming from. are trying to understand here. So if it is coming from the people who are infected, why shouldn't we go on and... from giving it to the people who are not infected, our dear judges. Thank you very much, and I'm ready for first examination. Thank you for your speech. You're welcome. The non-infected getting infected, or the infected getting more infected? We are giving this it 93 percent adherence of the it ARVs. Chua? You don't have an answer for I that. Uh, if we are to look at uh, the percentage of the people who don't have knowledge about HIV stroke AIDS, is and treatment. We have already told are you. Are all people prevention? aware? We have already told you we have prevention. I have got my treatment. answer. Let's look at 1982 and 2017. Compare the prevalence rate. And then why is it still there? No, don't so ask we me. are trying to eliminate Please the don't ask me. Answer what I've asked you. 1982, 2017. Compare the prevalence. There are 52 new infections and we have to eliminate them. Thank you very much. Then, can we close the tab of new infections? Well, of new infections. Who are infecting those people who are not infected? Are not infected. Good. So, and who, who is most infected in this case? You. They have already answered me. Yes. So, you are not willing to answer. Thank you. Uh, if we are to go at um, mother child transmission, what is the end result? We have never been anything. Are you treating the baby for Are you preventing the baby from acquiring the disease or treating the baby? We already told you prevention is under treatment. Is under treatment. Good. Yes. Let me ask you this question then. When you tell someone to abstain or to be faithful, is that treatment or prevention? And that is pre prevention. Is prevention? Yes. Thank you very much. You can take your seat.
begin by clearing the mis We are having a very high number of new infections every day. So, are we going to do away with these new infections? Are these new, do, does, do ARVs eliminate HIV, the HIV virus? They say no. So, that simply means that actually, even when people are on treatment, the virus still remains. And what does it imply? That actually, we have to focus on treatment. I, I mean, we have to focus on prevention. Preventing those who are, uh, preventing those who are HIV negative from getting, and also preventing those who are HIV positive from, from spreading the virus. That is the two-way prevention uh, my second speaker meant. It's two-way in that you are preventing people from acquiring and also preventing people from, from spreading the virus. And now they ask, they ask us, who brings the new infection? Yes, it is the one who is infected. But our prevention seeks to see that actually even those who are infected positively do not spread the virus. So it is, we are actually even preventing them from, getting, from spreading the virus. And we ask them, who then gets the virus? It is the one who, 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 was actually, who was actually negative. And the question to them is, does actually treatment and prevent this person from getting the virus? Actually, he does, he gets it and he remains with it. Now, uh, still, the major clash has been we, as the affirmative team, first of all, seek to prioritize, prioritize prevention over treatment. We do not neglect treatment. They seek to actually have to, priori uh, to prioritize, and the definition of prioritization is neglect. So they seek to actually prioritize treatment and neglect uh, prevention. And yet they also have a misconception that actually prevention falls under treatment. So they actually want to neglect both because if one is under the other, then you're seeking to neglect both. Another misconception in their case. Now, we bring in the, they bring in the case of the mother to change transmission. We ask them, when the mother is given ARVs, what is the end result? Is it preventing the mother, from, is it preventing the child from getting the HIV or it is treating the, the, the baby. In this case, the end result is prevention of the mother, uh, of the baby from acquiring. So in this case, we, we are actually realizing that it is prevention that ought to be prioritized because one, if, when, you, when there is a, if we, if we are to have this rate of new infections, then you have to make sure that those who are negative remain negative. And those who are actually positive do not spread it to those who are infected. And that's the major question that has been in the debate. Now, we also go ahead and ask them, of the population, which percentage is biggest in as far as the HIV virus uh, status is concerned? They agree that the majority of the population is negative. So where should we put the priority? On well, the majority or on the minority? It is obviously on the majority that are affected that we ought to put the, uh, the attention or the priority in this case, such that they can stay neg they can stay negative and also make sure that those who are those who are negative do not spread it unto the others. Now, as the affirmatives, we do not seek to actually neglect. We do not seek to neglect treatment. We agree, yes, those who are those who are those who are negative, those who are HIV positive, ought to receive treatment. But that is not our major priority. First of all, even the instance of ARVs, yes, it is to lead to immune to immune suppression, which reduces the risk of transmission. In this case, you are preventing those who are HIV positive from transmitting the virus, and the end result is HIV prevention, which we seek to promote. Now, still, still proceeding with our case, we still ask them the biggest question. Given the high number of new infections that we have, what, do we, what should we do to make sure that we curb this rate at which the virus, is, the virus is increasing? Is it prevention or treatment? Now, as the affirmative in our case, first of all, we emphasize infective communication because there's need to increase awareness given the fact that there is a, still a very high rate of uh, ignorance, which was 55%. They are, they, then also, also if I say, first of all, effective communication, and also this was also having door-to-door -door HIV, uh, HIV awareness, and also mobile units for say testing, and also giving out of ARVs, which are actually in place. We also encourage uh, prevention of mother-to-child transmission, and get, uh, show that actually there has been a reduction. There was a reduction from 2015 to 2016 by 15 percent of reduction from, from mother to child. We also continue to emphasize the ABC abstinence. 
uh, being faithful and economies, and we believe all these are preventive measures that would help us in tapping the new infections. How are we going to tap the new infections? By prevention or by treatment? That they have that to answer. As the affirmatives, we gladly rest our case. Thank you very much, the judges of today's tournament. Now, dear judges, our dear affirmers have completely misunderstood the negators, and it's very unfortunate. Dear judges, we said that prevention is ineffective, but then we also say that, dear judges, we prefer there is prevention, there is treatment, but we are looking on a so we are looking at a solution of how to fight AIDS. Did they relate the all that they were they have been saying to fighting against AIDS? They are judges. Of course, they did not. For us, we are focusing on what is going to fight against AIDS, and we are saying that for us to fight AIDS, we need to focus on treatment because it's the only way for us to achieve this. Dear judges, they talked about all the ways in which prevention is going to achieve all this, but we explained to them and showed them that this prevention can only be achieved if you first embrace treatment, dear judges. Did they agree with this or they did not agree with this, dear judges? They did not mention it, uh, anything about it, dear judges, meaning they concur with us. Dear judges showed them how prevention is going to fall under treatment. How? Because under treatment there is ART, antiretroviral therapy, whereby in antiretroviral therapy we have um, giving testing of, of patients, dear judges, testing of individuals, and after testing, we have counseling and guiding. Of course, counseling and guidance, they tell you if you're negative, how, and if you're positive, how to stay healthy. And even under treatment, we provide ARVs, dear judges. So if all the prevention they have been talking about is based on sensitization, don't you have sensitization in testing and uh, in counseling, dear judges, and guidance? Doesn't that mean that you concur with us that your prevention will be achieved only if you first embrace treatment? Because treatment is the one which brings about ART. And ART is the one which brings about your judges that sensitization that they are talking about. Why are you going to get a proof for sensitizing your judges? Now, starting from the first pharma dear judges, they say that there is there are very many the, there is a large number of new infections, dear judges. But we ask them who brings those new infections? Where are they getting the HIV from? Are they getting it from nowhere? Of course they are not, they are getting it from those who have the HIV. So dear judges, if you're saying that let us let us stop this people from acquiring it, but why don't you first look at where are they acquiring it, dear judges? That is what that is the question that we're asking. Why are they acquiring it? Because these people are giving it to them. Why are they giving it to them? Because they are not being catered for. That is why we say treatment is rather better than prevention. Because treatment will be achieved. For, for prevention to be achieved, you need to first embrace treatment. Again, the judges is they are saying that a need for prevention is because we are losing very many people. Which people are dying? The HIV positive or the HIV negative, dear judges? Of course, there are the people who are HIV positive. So doesn't that, that mean that they agree with us there is a need to reduce HIV related deaths? How are we going to reduce it? By treating those who already have HIV. That is stopping the, the danger that is being brought about by. Uh, by HIV, dear judges, by treating these people. Again, the second speaker came here and said that we see, we, we sought to maintain the status quo, dear judges. What was our status quo? We say that there is both prevention and treatment, and we seek to maintain it. How? Because we have said that prevention will not be eliminated. No, of course not. But it will come about through treatment. That is why we are saying we maintain our status quo. Of course, you did not listen. That is why you agreed that we, we say that we should seek to maintain the status quo. Of course, we seek to maintain the status quo. We cannot do our with prevention, but we need to seek it through treatment, dear judges. So that is null and void at that point. Another thing is that they are saying that they are prioritizing prevention rather than treatment. But dear judges, prioritizing is putting something above another. And for us, we are saying instead of prioritizing, we are preferring. You see, that is why you that is what you failed to identify, dear judges. They failed to identify it. So dear judges, they are prioritizing, meaning they're abandoning at us at some percentage one thing over the other. But first we are preferring because that's the only way we are going to achieve it, dear judges. Another thing. The judges that you talked about say that they say that treatment is ineffective and they ask pose for they pose that a very big question of how are we going to eliminate the virus, the judges? Is the virus in existence? Yes, yes, it is in existence. So are they going to eliminate it for them through preventive measures? Of course they are not. So if it's there, are they thinking that you should let this people die? No, we are saying that for us to 
to provide a solution to this virus, we need to treat the people who already have it. Now, we in today's debate, it has narrowed down to major the one flash point, that is majority versus minority, whereby when they are basing on the majority who do not have it, they are seeking to protect them. But first we are saying that let us focus on these minority who are going to endanger their majority, their judges. So don't you see that for you to protect your majority, you need to first see these people. They can be two people who are going to endanger a million people. Why don't you focus on the few people who are going to endanger the many people, their judges? So these questions that they have posed for us, their judges, we are not agreeing to it. Okay, thank you very much. I would like to speak. It's our culture, it's a culture of what we make, that after an intellectual fight, we, we congratulate each other. I want to take this opportunity to invite, it's a culture that the defending champions get represented and they make some remarks. So I'm going to take this opportunity to invite the defending champions, Mingo Senior School, to come and make some remarks in about three, four minutes, and then we shall proceed. Our guest of honor, Mr. Talon, honorable members of parliament present, uh, the chairman of the National Debating Council and your team, the panel of judges, hey teachers present, patrons of the various schools, debaters, Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Kristin Dumba, and I am standing here to represent the head teacher of Mango Senior School, Mr. John Frederick Kaziwe. These are students of Mango Senior School, and we are proud to be the defending champions. I wish to begin by thanking the National Debating Council for organizing this prestigious championship, bringing the nation together is not a simple thing. Mango Senior School, we know what it means because we hosted the first African debating championship in September, where we had various nations participate, so we know very well what it means. We thank you so much, Chairman, National Debating Council. Uh, to the panel of judges, we are very grateful for the work well done throughout the I cannot fail to recognize the great contribution of the patrons and coaches of the various schools. Myself, I'm a patron, and I know what it means to patron a club and to bring it to this far. On that note, I request the debaters to join hands with me, and we give the patrons a hand of applause. The champions of the year, they have not yet announced them. We wish to congratulate you as Mango Senior School, the defending champions, and please enjoy being champions throughout the year. So, may God bless you. So, we are going to award the schools, and when I call your school, you're going to come and receive your certificate uh, together with the entire team, the coach and all the debaters of that team. We're starting with Hope Secondary School, Laminadea. Let's applaud them as they receive this certificate. St. Paul's Mihare, St. Catherine SS, Rafa Girls Secondary School, Tasese SS Aduku St. Giovanni Nachinoni, please prepare. <laughs> Where is St. Catherine? Secondary School, Nyachinoni Girls, please hurry up, we don't have a lot of time. The longer you stay here, you're consuming the dinner time, you know, so your dance will be shorter. 
San Giovanni, please prepare. Ginger College, please prepare as well. San Giovanni. Ginger College is next. Holy Cross FB is next. Bukoyo SS is next. Mora High School prepare. Dara Christian prepare. Beranyanji be on standby. And Otinoa. Ranyanji girls. Otino wa. Oh, it is good to know that the chief guest is the OG of Ranyanji girls. She's an OG. Clap for her. And I'm not Ranyanji. Chair Champion, Bonjera be on standby as well. Teso College Alloyed should also be moving. We now want to see Rubona SS. Your honorable members in this house, come on. Bonjera Gauss, Teso College Alloyed, Lugazi Mix, King's College Budo, St. Peter's Tororo, King's College Budo, St. Peter's Tororo, Kasese Muslim, Ivan Nessus, be ready. Whoever is ready, come on. St. Peter's Tororo. Ivan, you should also be around. Restore leadership. Leadership. St. Leo's College, Chegobe. Mentor Secondary School, Vara SS, Chita and Hill, and Mount St. Mount St. Mary's Namagunga should be in the queue as well. Vara SS is next. Chitante Hill School is next. Magunga is next. Madam, I request that you take a rest as I call the clerk to parliament. And the following teams broke to the Octo Finals. Muyenga High School. Tare School, Kira College Butiki, Ginger says, if you know you broke to the octo finals, you should just be moving down quickly. That's the Tare School. Ginger Secondary School. Barara Secondary School. Deje SS is next. The following teams, ladies and gentlemen, broke to the quarterfinals. They broke to the quarterfinals. Mary Hill High School. St. Mary's College, Chisubi. St. 
St. Henry's College, Tobu. And Nalia Secondary School, Namugongo. And finally, Nalia, that is St. Henry's College, Tobu. Come on, clap for them. These guys are very smart, you know. Nalia Secondary School, Namugongo, our host last year. Okay, now the, the following teams broke to the semi finals. I am going to read one. So we have Chevambe Girls Secondary School and Mego Senior School, the defending champions. Please give them a big round of applause, Scott. Mango Senior School. Madam Chief Guest, we have an international program after the national championship. We have two international programs. One is international debate tournaments that register school teams, individual school teams, and a world school debate championship that only registers a national team. And I want to invite the team that represented the country in Harvard University at the Harvard World Schools Debate Championship, the defending champions, Mango Senior School, to receive the certificates from Harvard. <laughs> the club department will hand over the certificates to the coach. That is a team, part of the team, I don't know where Enoch is, that went to Harvard for the debate. The national team that represented us just last August in Bali, Indonesia, at the World Schools Debate Championship. The best speaker of 2016, Ruyombo Abbas, was part of that team. He's a first year student at law school now, and he's here to receive his certificate. Somebody help Abbas to make his way here. We also have Sajid Baruch from Muyega High School, who was on that team. Please come and receive your certificate al alone. Abbas is, needs help. He's visually impaired, so somebody is helping him. When he comes, we shall hand over his certificate to him. We, this year, we are awarding the best new team. The team that has come to the championship for the first time and has ranked top among the new teams. Can you guess? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the best new team at the 2017 National Schools Debate Championship is Barara Secondary School. And now this award to the best new team, Barara Secondary School. Congratulations to you guys. Come on, be happy for them. I'm now going to read the names of the top 10 speakers at this championship and they all come at a go. When I read your name, you come once and we hand over your certificates once. Ranking number 10 among the list of the best speakers at this year's tournament, Sejungo Rodini from SMAC. Coming in number 9, Natupunda Pamela from Imaginate Heart Girls School. Coming in number eight, Arinda Sevia from Utare School. Coming in number seven, Uhumza Julia from Mengo Senior School. Ranking number six, Adom Bridget from Nalia Secondary School, Namgong. Coming in number five, Nankisiki Hillary from Mary Hill High School. 
Coming number four, St. Shonda Zekedia from St. Henry's College, Chitofu. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the third best speaker at the tournament is Mayanja Benson from Ontario School. The second best speaker of the 2017 National School Speed Championship is Arinda Tracy from Mary Hill High School. And now, now, the top speaker at this year's National Debate Championship is Tutsime Peter from Iga At this point, I'm going to hand over to the Chief Adjudicator. The Chief Adjudicator will tell us the best three teams. Uh, our Chief Guest, yesterday we had a semi-finals where we had four teams and uh, two of the teams made it here, but I want to announce the third team because there were two teams that uh, did not make it, that participated in the quarterfinals, where one team lost by five ballots to zero. So five judges said that that team lost. And uh, the other team, judges said, out of the five judges, four said it lost. For that matter, that team that lost, that had one judge becomes the third team, third best team. And that team is Mengo SS. Can we invite Mengo SS to come and receive their medals? Now they, that moment, which everyone is waiting for, is here. Um, Madam Chief Guest, as you witnessed the debate here, when I was uh, watching the debate, I was reflecting on your writings in one of your most precious books I've ever read about HIV AIDS, and I actually recommend it for these young people. Maybe in your speech you will remind us of the title and where they can get copies from. So by a unanimous decision of seven judges, the winner of this eighth edition of the National Debate Championship, National School Debate Championship is Nyakasura School. Okay, I was going to say order, order, honorable members. Okay, so I'm going to say one or two words. I'll invite the chief guest to come and award the runners up. She'll give her remarks, and after that, she'll hand over the trophy. But I think I'll invite the club to parliament to come and invite the chief guest. I want to thank our long-time partners, they are like our heartbeat, the Parliament of Uganda. Please give them a big, big round of applause. And I am glad that the head of the Taking Wing of Parliament is here. Uh, Madam, we appreciate that every time we write to you to host us here and to sponsor the finals, you have never said no. We thank you very much.
we know therefore how passionate you are for young people, about them, and we know that you want them to grow and develop. We all know and believe that Parliament is the hub of debate. And so, I know from your office you were listening in how these young people were saying that it was my dream to come to Parliament and I'm here and how excited they are and how this is going to change their lives. So we are happy that Parliament is making a great contribution in building confidence, in having a citizenry that is informed, that is straightforward, that is patriotic, that loves their country and is concerned about the affairs that affect them. The second category of people that I want to thank are the head teachers and the schools that send their students here. And let's give them a big round of applause as well. <laughs> Madam, this championship, the primary round especially, are hugely sponsored by the schools. So each of the schools here made a subscription fee to participate. They also did the same for the regional tournaments. It is an expensive tournament to run, but the schools have done their best to do their part. We still have a big challenge because the more the services get expensive, we have no option but to ask the schools to pay little more. And by doing that, we disadvantage some of the schools that cannot afford. So there are schools out there that have the talent that want to engage in this program but cannot afford because of the fairs. I was touched last week when a head teacher from West Nile, from Koboko to be specific, told me that he had the subscription fee but has failed to raise the transport of the team from Koboko to Kampala. And I, was, I felt really, really touched about it but couldn't do so much about it. There are many schools like that that would love to be here, that dream to be here, but can't. And it is something, it is a conversation we need to get deep into and see how to support every young person in this country to get the best they can get out of what is available. So right now, it's my humble pleasure and privilege to invite the clerk to parliament, who is going to come and invite the chief guest to hand over the remaining prizes and big car remarks. Let's welcome the clerk to parliament. Thank you, Father. Uh, thank you very much, NDC. I also want to take this opportunity to officially welcome you to the parliament of Uganda and also to inform you that this is a people-centered parliament. So you are always welcome. We don't pay any fee, we don't ask for any fee for you to access Parliament. So it's a matter of writing to us and then we can schedule you. So feel free anytime to come in and see how the debates are conducted in this Parliament. I wish to thank you that you took this uh, initiative that brings the youngsters together because this is one way of interacting, you know. Uh, the North interacting with the West and the Central interacting with the East, and, you know. So I think this is a good uh, beginning and since we have the minister, ministers, government, I'm sure will be supporting you. So as parliament, we always do what it takes to accommodate the young because these are their leaders of tomorrow, although they say that they are leaders now. But uh, just take heart, it's tomorrow. So I wish to, with those few words, to invite the Honorable Minister Mary Carolo Root to come and address us. And before she comes, I congratulate the winning team and the second base. And I, I would say that you are all winners in your own capacity. So take heart. Honorable Minister, you're all coming. Uh, good evening, everybody. Now, after such a gratifying day, even though I am a messenger of the right Honorable Prime Minister, I'll try to cut short the remarks so that you can have time 
to go and party. So I'll get out only the pregnant ones for this occasion. So is it your owner or is it the speaker in the chair? Sorry? Oh, it has expired. Your time has expired. You are emeritus. And the chairman of the National Debate Council, the clerk, my friend and very capable lady in this parliament. Members of parliament, if there are still any here, the organizers of this debate, the honorable students who have put out all of you such a fantastic performance, ladies and gentlemen. So I first of all want to bring the apologies of the right honorable prime minister. At the last minute, he got an engagement in NTV and he asked me to come. They didn't say well, what kind of a minister I am. I am the minister for general duties in the office of the prime minister. So when he sent me, I was... So we are going to combine the schools, and when I call your school, you're going to come with us through spiritual osmosis. <laughs> I was very happy. I was very happy to come and represent you. Because what you have done here and what you have been doing is something that this government encourages. I run a call in New Vision every Tuesday, and this Tuesday I actually wrote about this very topic that you have been covering today. So if you uh, manage to get to today's New Vision, read it. But if I had listened to your debate first, oh, my answer would have come out one million times better than it. <laughs> I came here mid morning and I listened. So I came again. And the debate is high class. You speak, you speak from informed position. Statistical data. It's, I said the positive misery was here. Or that is counted a long way. From informed positions, your skills, your skills will take you to far places. Already, you have got exposure. And these kinds of debates, the schools that are here, this fosters the spirit of the spirit of unity in our country, the spirit of togetherness in our country, and the spirit of patriotism. We are here as one. So please, let's join our hands together. Thank the organizers once again and thank you for this great, great event. In fact, as I listen to some of you, and as I watch the way you are composed, I say many of these will end up in this parliament in a few years' time. They were saying that everybody should become a politician. Oh, there are so many. So, so, very many information. But if you come here, you are already sure that you can do it. Now, uh, uh, Emeritus, you are looking to my book. Yes, I, I am a writer. And uh, the book is talking about. I, I, I captured the experience of HIV AIDS in the political diaspora. And the book is titled The Invisible People. Because I remember one of uh, my cousins who passed on saying that this, that AIDS is like a people. You look at a bee, you think it's okay, but when you open it, you find that it's already born. That was the time before there were no ARPs. They were not there. So it was, it was a death sentence. But I'm told that AIDS is no longer the same. So, what you are debating, people should go and meet this thing. But some of our people still fear. You tell them to go for testing, they say, ah, I don't want to know. But you'd rather know 
and go ahead with the Arabians. In the 80s, when it had just come, people you sell this is witchcraft. You know how to talk our people. But thank God, President Museveni is on record. He halted the AIDS pandemic. He halted the AIDS genocide in Uganda. And you are carrying on the fight. This debate, you are carrying on that fight. Because even though we have one son, we still have brown cup. So now the main message from the Prime Minister, having appreciated this debate and saying it must go on, he's pledging government support. So Mr. Chairman, the Prime Minister who happens to be the leader of government business is saying that he is ready to give support to this club to this organization because it has a very very positive message for Uganda. You can pass from me in order to go to the father. <laughs> Instead of you picking up stones and sticks and going into violent strikes, you channel your energies into healthy debate, which is something that every person in Uganda should applaud. And we are saying, as you as you say, and I'm taking the message once again, that no school should come on board. No school should be left out. Because this is for all you've done. And the, the Prime Minister said that he's going to make that one loud and clear. So, with those remarks, I told you, let's get out of the view. I want to thank you once again. I want to congratulate you all for participating. Like the club has said, they are winners, but they are no losers. Nobody has lost. We have one, all one, in one way, for another people. Please give them another round of applause for all of you. But you see me as a creative artist. Even the way you have presented yourself physically, you see when you are debating, we do not only look at your brain, that is the most important thing. But also the physical smartness. I have been impressed. Keep it up. You have clearly demonstrated that you do not have caution for brains. You are up there, stick it and keep it up. For God and my country. It is the tradition at the SDC that the coach of the winning team becomes the best coach that year. And so I would like to invite the Nakasura School coach to come and see you. And now it's that moment. Ladies and gentlemen, to welcome the champions of 2017 to come to